Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, the first video of 2024, I want to look to the future. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC has come and gone, and it is time to begin speculating about what the future of the Pokemon franchise might have in store in the next year. Let's get right into it. It is my favorite time of the year. I love when new Pokemon games come out. I love getting to get them in the mail for the first time, turn the game on and start playing and pour hundreds of hours into a brand new experience. But my favorite thing about the Pokemon franchise and any entertainment franchise has to be the speculation and hype season. And now that it is 2024 and Scarlet and Violet is behind us, we can begin looking to the future. There is no doubt in my mind that a brand new Pokemon game is coming this year. This is a big year for Nintendo. Everyone essentially assumes that we're getting a brand new Switch at some point this year. We might have Nintendo announcing this officially relatively soon. They could wait until June. They could wait a lot longer. But it seems that most of the industry and fans of Nintendo expect that by the end of this year, we're going to know what is after the Switch, whether that's a Switch 2, uh, a Super Switch, something to that effect, how will Nintendo iterate on one of their most successful consoles of all time? Pokemon, of course, is a heavy piece to this formula. Nintendo is going to want Pokemon on their brand new system, or at the very least, coming shortly after launch. If Pokemon is giving us a new game this year, there is every chance that around the month that the game comes out, we're going to have a brand new console to play it on. And this is my first prediction of the video. I believe that the Switch 2 is gonna be backwards compatible with the Nintendo Switch. You're gonna be able to grab Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Pokemon Scarlet, pop it into your Switch 2 and play it. Do I think there's going to be an up res of the games? Better resolution, better frame rate? Who's to say? There were rumors when Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out, based on some information found in the data mine, that Game Freak was potentially developing these titles with better hardware in mind, and something internally with Nintendo's plans changed halfway through the Switch's life cycle. So I can't make a prediction on that, but I do believe that whatever console game we get next on the Switch is going to be announced for the Switch, but will also come out for the Switch 2. I believe that is going to be Game Freak's method of delivery at the end of this console generation. If you go back to the 3DS, if you go back further to the DS, when a new piece of Nintendo hardware came out, Game Freak was always a little bit behind the eight ball. They were still putting out Nintendo DS games when the 3DS was well into its launch with Pokemon Black and White 2. X and Y came out in 2013 in October, after all. With the Nintendo Switch, we didn't get a brand new generation for a little while after the Switch's launch. It started with Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and then evolved from there. So I do believe that there's going to be a Pokemon title that works on the new Switch system that we get at the end of this year, but it is going to be due to backwards compatibility. Could there be a launch title tie-in? I think it's certainly possible, but you'd have to be able to play it on the old Switch, in my opinion. We have quotes from Masada and other members of Game Freak and the Pokemon Company over the span of many years at this point, talking about how it is really important to them to deliver their games to where their players are. And I can see Game Freak being a little skeptical about putting a brand new Pokemon game only on the newest console that doesn't have a huge user base just yet because the console is just coming out and with any new console there's always shipping delays you're always fighting and traveling a lot further than you might want to actually pick up the system because it's sold out in your local store these are problems that are going to come up especially if nintendo releases it in the latter part of the year during the holidays so we will see how the dissemination of this game comes out but i do believe we're getting a game we didn't get one last year, we got DLC. And I know I've had a couple people ask me on social media for my thoughts about the Indigo disc. I promise you in the coming weeks, those thoughts will come out. I've just very busy holiday, was not really able to get on the content like I wanted to, but with the new year, I'll hopefully be able to deliver some thoughts to you guys before we get into Pokemon day in February, when we will probably see this new Pokemon announcement. The announcement of course, I believe is coming in February. I believe it is coming on Pokemon Day or shortly thereafter or a little bit before to celebrate Pokemon Day. And we will know what Game Freak is planning. 
There are two very heavy hitting contenders in the fan community in terms of speculation. They are, of course, a Pokemon Legends Johto, maybe a Legends Celebi of sorts. If you're looking at the timeline of game releases, we just got Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl with Legends Arceus a couple years ago. So we've revisited the Sinnoh region. Those are remakes, of course, of Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. In the timeline of the Pokemon world and releases, after those games, we got Heart Gold and Soul Silver, remakes of Generation 2's Gold and Silver, with some elements from Gen 4 added, some elements from Crystal added, to make one of Game Freak's best Pokemon games to date. If you're following a timeline, which Game Freak tends to enjoy doing, we're overdue to see Johto again. You have to understand with Pokemon, it is a mass marketing juggernaut. They want to keep all the regions and all the Pokemon of those regions in the public eye at all times because it allows them to sell more merchandise, more plushes, more trading cards. It allows them to bring older parts of the Pokemon canon back into the anime and highlight it in the anime. And through that, you get the churn of the merchandising cycle every single year. Johto is the oldest region we have not revisited. We revisited Kanto again with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and that came before Gen 4 remakes. That falls in line with the fact that we had Fire Red and Leaf Green come in Generation 3 before Gen 4, after Ruby and Sapphire. The lineup of remakes makes sense. If that happens, would Game Freak entrust Ilka again to develop a more faithful recreation of Pokemon HeartGold and Soul Silver, and do the dual release system again. I certainly think it's possible. I think Game Freak's thinking with Ilka and with Legends Arceus was that they wanted fans to still get that original Pokemon remake experience, but they wanted to develop something else. They wanted to do something new with the remake formula, which is why we got Legends Arceus, and it ended up being wildly successful. So while I do think it's possible that Ilka could remake HeartGold and Soul Silver for the Switch, I don't think that is a guarantee if we get a Legends Celebi game. I think Game Freak would have more trust in the Legends brand at this point, and if they wanted to do something with it without having to pair it with something else, I think that's something they'd be more comfortable with now that they've seen sales and now that they've seen the reaction from the community to that game. Legends Arceus seems to have the most nostalgia by the community for a recent Pokemon game to this point. More nostalgia than Sword and Shield, more nostalgia than Scarlet and Violet or other recent games, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Legends seems to be the one that people are talking about the most after release, now that we've had, you know, a little bit of time to reflect on its impact to the franchise. And there were, of course, hints, both in Legends Arceus and other games, that we could be returning to Johto soon. So much of the lore of Legends Arceus was built up in the idea of Sinjo and where the people in the Sinnoh region, the Hisui region at the time, came from. I've gone over this in previous videos. There's enough hinting there, especially with relationships to some of the characters that you met in the game, to say that they could return to this continent where these regions are based in the future and give us something. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. That was where I put my money for years. That was what we were getting next. But since then, it seems like the dominant force in the community, the dominant talking point is Unova. And I can understand why. If you've played Scarlet and Violet's DLC, the Unova connection is incredibly heavy handed. The Indigo Disc and the Terrarium that you explore is so fully realized as a mini Unova from the Pokemon you meet, to the characters you interact with, to the music remixes you hear in different battles. It is a Unova remake on a smaller scale, essentially. So I can understand why many members of the community would say, that's what's next. We're returning to Unova. Incredible, incredibly obvious. Game Freak is pushing us in this direction. Game Freak is saying, we're gonna re-experience Unova. All of the things that many of members of the community are now nostalgic for, we're gonna give it to you again. Before we get a new generation of Pokemon, which will be the first new generation on the new Nintendo console, we will harken back to an old generation as a swan song to the Switch and show you Unova again in a brand new way. Perfectly possible. Could Game Freak just be acting incredibly obvious with this. 
sure. I think it's possible. But I'm going to take a swing here in this video and say that's not happening. I think the Terrarium for now is our Unova remake. Remixed music. Characters with relations to some of the gym leaders in Unova. Tons of Unova Pokemon returning. F new forms for old Unova Mythicals and Legendaries. Getting to catch some of the older Unova Mythicals in the Terrarium for the first time. Meloetta. This is our Unova remake. They're not going to skip the timeline. In 2024, we're going back to the Johto region. Game Freak has been developing it using the Legends Arceus game engine ever since the game came out. It's going to look and feel a ton like Legends Arceus, but with some brand new mechanics that incorporate the story and the lore of Legends Arceus into a new game. It'll be that survivalist mentality still, where Pokemon battles are a little bit different. Your goal with interacting with the world is a lot more action adventure than it is RPG regular. It's going to have that flavor, but they're going to work with some of the innovations that they had in the original game and really turn some of this stuff up to 11. It's going to be a return to Johto, Johto of the past, and we're going to learn more about the lore and history of the region and its connection to the Kanto region and to the Hisui region of the time. We're going to learn more about the Burn Tower and the rumors of Ho-Oh and what it did to the legendary dogs, the legendary beasts of Johto, how the Burn Tower impacted the culture of the Johto region. And we're gonna learn a lot more lore about some newer characters and their connection to older fan favorites. I think this is all a smokescreen. I trust that Game Freak is going to stick to their system. They remake games in a very specific order, but I do not believe that Game Freak has a ton of interest right now in doing a straight Johto remake, especially because where it is on the timeline, it's already a remake. They're not gonna just go back to generation two and say it's time to remake Gold and Silver again. I think it's gonna be heavy inspiration from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which means some of the events that were added in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the interacting with other legendaries, bringing Arceus in and using the event to go to Sinjo, all of that is going to have an impact on this game. Will it be called Legend Celebi? Maybe, but that feels a little too obvious. It'll be something else. It'll be a reference maybe to a new legendary, maybe to one of the legendary beasts, a Legends Raikou or a Legends Entei, and you will learn about how the beasts came to be, something to that effect. I believe my guess is that we're actually returning to the Johto region, and you're going to have to wait until whatever remakes come in the next generation of Pokemon for Unova. I think it's too soon. I think this is just Game Freak paying homage to Unova, not directly hinting at what's next for the franchise. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for Pokemon's future? What do you think we're going to see in 2024? Let me know down in the comments section below. And as I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you never miss any future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.